Settlements spring up like weeds throughout the Underhive, and many perish just as quickly, most surviving for less than a great cycle before returning to the ruins from whence they came. It is therefore rare for a new hole to last, and even rarer for one to last in a place where Hivers have no business living. Quite possibly the oddest thing about Rust Town is not its location in the middle of the Bone Dry. An old cistern as big as a solar freighter, once completely underwater, now long since turned into a vast open dust bowl. Far from the main tunnels and domes of the Underhive, but rather the fact that no one can say for sure how long it's existed. Some traders swear the isolated settlement only sprung up a few cycles ago and claim to have crossed the Bone Dry dozens of times without ever laying eyes on it before then. Others reckon it to be among the oldest of the Underhive settlements, saying its foundations were laid long before the cataclysm that created Dust Falls or before Sump City rose from the slime of Hive Bottom. Why it exists in the middle of what constitutes a man-made desert is unclear, though Hivers, Gilders, and Nobles all make the trek to its gates to trade and visit the court of Bold Byron. The enigmatic Byron, a tall, lanky man of indeterminate age and origin is the self-proclaimed mayor of Dust Town. He rules over a settlement of hivers who are devoted to maintaining the Rust Town ruin, Bold Bryon's deadly dungeon extravaganza. Scrappers and scavengers bring in their finds from the Bone Dry, while caravans trade goods from further afield. But in Rust Town, the only thing the locals seem to produce are trinkets associated with their Rust Town run. These range from grinning Bryon, gun belts, and runner kill coins to genuine chrono crystal polishing kits. Even the town itself seems to exist solely for the run. Its slanting streets and wonky buildings perched up on a plasteel hill containing the run itself. While Rust Town might not produce junk rounds, fungi paste, gunk, or any of the other substances useful to underhivers, it does have one thing in abundance. Entertainment. The Rust Town Run is legendary throughout the Underhive. Even in Hive City and the Spire, people have heard of the Run, and challengers from throughout Hive Primus, and even beyond, have been known to make the journey to try their luck in Brian's Maze. Each great cycle, challengers are invited to brave the maze. These hopefuls entering into one of the mayor's lotteries, which are nothing as simple as drawing numbers or casting dice, and usually involve such entertainment as second best drinking contests, game of pinfinger, or run low roulette. Even for those who aren't chosen to run, a chance is offered for glory, this time as hunters. The hunters stalk the maze, trying to stop the runners reaching the goal, one of the fabled Chrono Crystals, and earn creds for each one they can take out. 
The run itself changes every time it is used, sometimes in subtle ways, such as a previously safe door now rigged with a deadly booby trap, or sometimes less subtle, like chambers being flooded with toxic chemicals or the entire run being filled out with plague zombies. Typically, the perils are those gangs might face out in the bad zones, ranging from the grinding teeth of ancient machinery to pitch black tunnels riddled with pitfalls. All this becomes even more challenging when hunters are shooting at the runners or trying to push them into pits of ripper jacks. While gangs rarely complete the run, each time it is held, the town's economy booms and they grow rich on the thousands of credits bet on the outcome. Only a handful of gangs and individuals have ever won one of the runs and gained a chrono crystal. Some of these crystals are still in the hands of their original owners, though many have been lost, stolen or sold. Hagen's Hole has won above the bar, sold to Hagen to cover an outlandish drinking tab by a notable underhive bounty hunter. Some drinkers do claim that the gem does strange things to the flow of time when you look at it, although that might just be the booze. One-Eyed Kitty, a blade dancer out of two tunnels, has one too, given to her by an admirer. When she dances, she wears the crystal in her navel, its sparkle mesmerizing the audience. Then there's the one owned by Costas the Chain Lord, set into the hilt of his shock lash. Its brilliance forms a stark contrast to the slaver's grimy appearance and broken grin. To most hivers, these crystals are nothing more than fancy baubles, and their owners and placement throughout the hive completely random. However, there are those who argue otherwise especially once they've downed a few bottles of Wild Snake. The rumour mongers claim that Bald Brian serves Dark Masters, and his crystals are part of some far-reaching plan to bring about the Chrono Catalysm. And what is the Chrono Catalysm? Well, that varies depending on which drunken conspiracy theorist you ask. Some will tell you it is a plot by the immortal cult of Necrovanda to bring about a psychic awakening of all humanity, or perhaps a plan by the ancient Iron Lords of the Aranus Continuity to free Necromunda from the yoke of the Imperium. Others whisper that Rust Town was created by House Arthanus, that Brian is in fact Brian Arthanus, last true heir of his family and the crystals are intended to turn back time and restore his bloodline. And then there are those who say that he's actually an agent of the throne, and they suggest his plans have already come to pass, and they're all living in an alternate reality, created by the Ordo Kronos. Whatever reality it may be, Rustown's still good for a laugh. 